Is ESO in trouble? Is ESO a dead game? What is the state of the Elder Scrolls Online? These are the questions I'm constantly asked on and off stream about the Elder Scrolls Online, where it's at right now and where the future is. I wanted to take some time to answer these questions on my YouTube channel and give you my perspective on the game's current state and the future of the Elder Scrolls Online. Look, no one likes the Elder Scrolls Online more than I do, but I gotta be honest with you, this past year has been a roller coaster of massive ups and downs, both in terms of enjoyment and player base. But I wanna break down what's been happening in the game, to set the stage for what it's currently like and possibly what the game holds in the future. Before I start, I think we can agree on three positives and three negatives about the Elder Scrolls Online in general. Positive, the combat in the game is absolutely phenomenal. It's nuanced along with deep character builds and customizations. The game has a ton of freedom. With a little bit of effort a couple hours into the game past the tutorial in level 10, you're free to roam, do what you want, and pick the content that you like to enjoy. And last positive, the community is just different than any other MMO with some of the nicest people from all over the world. World. The three negatives are essentially this is the way I see it. Number one, it has terrible server performance and it has since day one. Skill delay, bugs, crashes, loading screens along with no crossplay. Number two, constant overhauls of gear, skill, champion points and the never ending treadmill of keeping up is very, very high. And number three, lack of communication with the developers and the reason for their decisions and how it will affect or improve the game's outcome. What many were looking forward to in the year two 2022 was a new class, a new skill line, or something that accentuated our current builds and made them more interesting. Think Antiquities or the Civic Order skill line. Both were different, unique, and fun, and added a lot of variety to our current builds. So if we didn't get a class, hopefully we got this. Instead, we got pretty much more of the same in a new system, the card game Tales of Tribute, which I didn't think anyone really saw coming. But we did get some glimpses of what this game could become if the servers actually work. Let me backtrack a little bit in the year years leading up to 2022, and ESO had done very well, partly because of the worldwide pandemic. In fact, according to Steam charts, you can see a massive surge in players around April of 2020, and the game held on steadily this population trend for over the course of a couple years, with ups and downs that you would normally see in any MMO, with releases of new content, DLCs, and so forth. April 2020 saw a 92.92% increase on Steam charts in the average player base, with little over 20 28,000 active players. Those folks were quote unquote working from home or pretending to be on a conference call like I was back in early of 2020. The game had a really healthy population at that time, both in terms of consoles and PC. We saw a lot of interactivity on Twitch and a big resurgence in the viewership and people taking interest in the game because a lot of people may have lost their job, unfortunately, or were working from home. And you know who you are. You also had the Greymore chapter, which introduced Antiquities, a new system that gave gave pretty much everyone something to do. You could go dig things up, you could go collect housing items, or you could collect super powerful mythics, one piece set bonuses that you can only use one, that are the bread and butters and staple of the top tier builds in the game, both PvE and PvP. All this is to essentially say that ESO was doing well for two years, partly because of interesting content, including new ways to optimize and change your builds, stories, and the pandemic's impact on employment. Wrapping up the two-year boom from the game, and we got the studio director's letter in late 2021, December. This discussed and highlight the past year's successes, struggles, and what was to come in 2022. And as you can imagine, it was very cryptic and vague, but two things stuck out to me. One, ESO wanted to continue telling good stories, and two, fix the server performance. I'm old enough to remember the first, second, and third time they said they were going to work on ESO servers and fix them and improve them. In fact, do you remember the year 2020? I think that was the year of increased performance. We're talking client, optimization, server, and database. That was the year of performance, but nothing really changed. That year didn't change anything, and they kicked the problem down the road to another couple years, and 2020 emerged. The studio director's letter indicated it would be another year of alleged performance improvements, but shockingly, we did see some increased performance in the year 2022. Matt Fire posted in April of 2022 about the hardware refresh. Essentially, ESO was running running on a bag of potatoes from about 2012 on. They had some hardware that was very archaic and old, and I think this was holding back a lot of performance. For once, Zenimax Online Studios really didn't hype up this change, that it was going to radically change everything, and overnight it was going to be much improved. But that's exactly what happened. 
and the community and the player base responded. So during this hardware refresh, the next day, specifically on PC North America only, the game performed radically better. And the word and the buzz started to getting around like, hey, have you actually played Cyrodiil? It's a lot different. Not perfect, but much improved. There was some speculation and buzz that this hardware refresh was in part due to the Microsoft acquisition of ZeniMax Media, the parent company to ZeniMax Online Studios in September of 2021. We don't know if it's true, but it does seem interesting that within less than one year of the acquisition, at least something improved on the server for a segment of the population. The population kind of settled back into normal according to Steam charts. Now look, Steam charts isn't the most accurate indicator of everyone playing the game because you have consoles or you have someone like me that doesn't even use Steam Client to launch their game. But it's a good indicator of the fluctuations of player base. And it's settled back down to about 13 to 14,000 average players per month. But once the hardware refresh took place, the servers immediately flood with players seeing if the rumors were true. Does ESO actually run better? Absolutely it does, but not perfect. Cyrodiil turned from a barren wasteland into a 24-7 brawl, just like old times. A lot of my friends who moved on from the game returned and I was living the dream, constantly playing and streaming on and off stream. And it was some of the best time in the game history. Around that time, we also started to get details on the High Isles chapter, the latest in the Elder Scrolls Online. I got to privately test the card game Tales of Tribute along with new gear sets and mythics. And my opinion on the card game was this, meh. I'm an old school Magic the Gathering player. In fact, I used to chug down Diet Mountain Dews constantly sitting there playing Magic the Gathering. Blue control deck, counter spell, baby. And now I got a six year old son and we spend a lot of time playing Pokemon. So I love card games, but this one I couldn't stand. The reason why is it's a deck builder, primarily based on just purely math and a lot of RNG. Moreover, there wasn't a whole lot of flashy animations and it was super complex to start getting your head wrapped around and start playing and actively get involved in it. No offense to those that like the card game, but I thought it was poorly designed and there was nothing grabbing me beyond the rewards to do it over and over and over that were exciting. So I moved on and didn't really play it. But there was a diamond in the rough with the High Isles chapter, something that radically changed the game, and that was Oaken Soul, the One Piece mythic item that locked you into only using one bar, but gave you massive buffs, making your build much simpler and easier to play with not that many downsides. My friend Hack the Minotaur, I think originally came up with these one bar builds, which would eventually transform into their own mythic Oaken Soul. Hey, that's not fair. I want a mythic, maybe jumping a lot. I imagine Hack's original intent was to keep the build very simple for folks who struggle with bar swapping, high actions per minute, or having a physical disability. Oaken Soul on launch was absolutely amazing in PVE, specifically solo PvE, and it was absolutely mind-bogglingly god mode overpowered in PvP, which we hit another snag in ESO's content and their balancing, which is they don't separate both PvE and PvP, including gear sets and or skills. In PvE, I believe that Oakensoul originally was launched in one of the best mythics of all time or gear pieces to ever hit the Elder Scrolls Online, well before it got nerfed. More to that later. Finally, people were getting 70, 80, 90,000 K parses and getting access to veteran trials, a whole new world of the game that only the high parse elitist players had been seeing. The great thing about Oaken Soul when it originally launched in PV was this. It would not outperform a two bar build. In fact, I ran my Oaken Soul Templar back to back, the exact same gear, plus or minus the Oaken Soul with the exact same skills, exact same champion points, the exact same passes, everything. Oaken Soul got a trifecta in 22 minutes in veteran Batashram Hollows, the hardest solo arena in the game. Meanwhile, my two bar got 20 minutes and absolutely obliterated the content. Take this exact same Oaken Soul and put it on a parse nummy and you could get pretty high numbers with really good players getting well over 100,000. But give them two bars and you're looking at 120 to 130,000. Thus, average player, really increased the floor, but it didn't decrease the ceiling, exactly what we needed in PvE. However, the Oaken Soul was so disgusting overpowered in PvP, you were almost forced to use it. You'd have Kalorian Nightblades running around one-shotting everyone with no counterplay, or you'd have my one bar Necro Stamina Bomber nuking entire groups with just a couple clucks of the button. As annoying as this was to have a super high damage meta and constantly dying, Cyrodiil and the game were alive. The hardware refresh in combination with the new chapter in Oaken Soul brought a massive influx of players and I was having the time of my life. Well, until update 35.
Going back to one of the negatives about ESO is the constant three-month cycle of radical overhauls to the game's core mechanics. Most veteran or returning players know this, and in general, every three months, there will be a new trendy gear set, mythic, or skill you have to adapt and use or you'll fall behind. It's what makes retaining players in ESO so hard. You have no idea where to start when you come back. Most of your gear sets, skills, are outdated or ineffective, which is great for an ESO content creator like myself to share this information freely on my website, but it's a turnoff to a lot of players and they don't return because they know three months later, everything's gonna change. Well, sadly, we got more of the same and update 35 brought a titanic amount of changes from absolutely nowhere. Update 35 arrived on the PTS in July of 2022 and was quite possibly the biggest, most radical amount of changes the game has seen since the early launch days. Overhauls to light and heavy attack scalings and resources. Total revamp and damage over times and healing over time. Unprecedented class changes to include new animations for Templar jabs. One of the quintessential skills in the game that I don't think anyone asked for. The list went on and on, but you see the point. WTF, where'd this come from? Eight years deep into the game and we're blindsided by these massive changes. And what's most important here is we didn't get an indication why. Communicating clearly with us, what was the intent behind this? Why is it beneficial for the game? More on that later. The community was in an uproar with the massive amount of feedback given on the forums and Twitter and all those other nasty places people spam nasty things. But most of the changes stuck and only a few were reverted. With so much uproar, Zoss did post on the public test server in August that they were going to work on a brief Q&A regarding these issues, which never happened. And here you have another main disappointment to the year leading to a mass exodus in the game. Me personally, if you're gonna change your game, look, it's your game, it's not mine. I'm just one player, that's great. But please, as a customer, tell me why you're changing the game. Why this radical? Why is it so important? What is the end goal? And where are we on the process? None of that was clearly communicated and it feels like we're on a roller coaster every time a PTS hits, oh my God, is it gonna completely nerf my character, gut all of my skills and my gear sets and I'm gonna have to move on? Just please, Zenimax, if you watch this, tell us what's going on, why is it so important, and where are we on the journey? Another issue with Update 35 is it pushed builds specifically more into the hybrid play style, meaning everyone essentially runs a very homogenized build, all very similar. Dual wield on the front, 2H on the back, all using medium armor, and they say, I'm a stand build. No, wait, I'm a magic build. No, really, I'm a hybrid, which is essentially the exact same build that everyone runs, plus or minus two to three class skills. And there you have it, class identity eroded. The player base responded with a mass exodus of players and a lot of content creators. And we were left with a pre-pandemic type number, which ESO currently is hovering at. And you also saw a massive reduction interest on Twitch. Another massive disappointment was the nerf to Oaken Soul in Update 35, taking down some of the big major buffs to minor, making it very hard to use this mythic and still perform very well. This would solve the issue for PvP, but it would hamper the mythic in PvE, which was the great equalizer for a lot of people that enjoyed this mythic, and it brought them pure enjoyment in the Elder Scrolls Online again. Oaken Soul builds faded, both in PvE and PvP, and so too did the community, unfortunately. And now you get to update 36 that was recently launched here on PC and coming soon on console. What Zenimax did in reaction to all this upheaval and uproar is, well, really not change a whole lot in Update 36. So this is better for some of the population. People that want to come back to the game get caught up. You're reasonably going to have three, four, five months to come back, farm gear sets, and have a stable build for quite a while. For hardcore veteran players, you're not going to have a whole lot to do, and your build is going to remain somewhat the same. And for better or for worse, they really didn't offer a lot of game-breaking new gear sets that we know of yet or mythics. There were some good alternatives to things we're currently using, but not a set and forget you have to have it for every single build. That's where we're at. Not a lot of combat, gear, or skill changes. And the interesting thing about this November update is it's the last in the year long cycle. So how typically ESO works is the meta or what you have right now in November is going to carry on for five or six months. Typically, you have a couple months of just seasonal events. January comes out and they start teasing and hinting at and or releasing what's going to be coming in the chapter in June. Then typically you hit February and the next update is going to hit the PTS, which leads into March. So you have about a five month span for what your build is right now. The current meta and PvP tanking meta is what your build is going to have. 
Again, great for people trying to catch up. For veteran players, they're moving on, checking out different games and seeing if it's worth it. Speaking of newer returning players, it's a getting more and more complex to know exactly which gear set to use and why. Take World of Depths, for instance. The tooltip is like reading Obi Dick novel. Not that I've ever read that. When you deal damage with a light attack, you apply World of Depths to the target. Dealing frost damage over 8 seconds. When this effect ends, a 5 meter whirlpool is created under the target for 6 seconds. Dealing frost damage every 1 second. This effect can occur once every 18 seconds and scales off your highest weapon or spell damage. Oh, am I done reading? Oh, I'm waking up from my nap. You see how long that is? It's not plus 100 willpower. It's not plus 100 strength. It's not one set. It's getting more and more complex to actually parse out and figure out, is this better than the previous set? Is this better than raw damage? What is this set trying to do? Another example is Order's Wrath. This is a craftable set, and the five piece does increase crit damage and crit healing by 8%. Very simple, intuitive, and easy to understand that set, but when you compare it with a trial set like World of Depths, you're just lost with, is this really good? And you gotta leave it to the math nerds on the parse dummies to actually figure it out for you, not the game, because it's not intuitive, thus leading to more confusion, more frustration. We're not done with the big changes and the big things happening to Elder Scrolls Online. One is outside of its control, and that's New World, a game that launched last year that had a lot of problems, but a lot of promise as well. Has a lot of similarities to ESO, specifically territories and big huge fights, which I think are attractive to someone like me. In fact, I've been playing it again, trying to give it another chance after these reworks in these new servers, and I'm saying it's kind of fun. This game actually 10 x its population overnight, with huge massive peaks amount of players, and the average population is big time gains. People want to see, is this the next big MMO? Does this have staying power? Does this have a relevant massive end game? And people will flood to MMO RPGs if there's potential, if there's something new and interesting, and if it works. You also have a combination of Call of Duty, Overwatch, God of War, and World of Warcraft, the juggernaut MMO, launching a new expansion at the end of this month. ESO isn't a ghost town by any means. It's kind of settled back down into low population pre-pandemic, but it's getting harder and harder to get groups, whether it's Endgame or just random Cyrodiil fights. Population is quite sparse. It's not anecdotal only. It's through these Steam charts, through Twitch Tracker, the general interest is down. But that's not to say it's a bad game. And that leads me to the final point. Is ESO in trouble? Is the game dead? Or what's going on? I don't think the game's dead and it's going to wither away into oblivion. No pun intended. It's Elder Scrolls Online. It's all about exploration. It's about questing. It's about exploring. And that's really what the game has morphed into. When it originally launched, it was about Cyrodiil, it was about trials, it was about conquering things, getting guilds together, doing bigger and better tasks you couldn't do by yourself. Even Overland content was extremely challenging and took a lot of people to band together. ESO has morphed dramatically into a solo player's game. In fact, there's an article with creative director Rich Lambert that points to this. Rich Lambert did an interview recently with GamesIndustry.biz, where he says, quote, that's the hardest part. Most Elder Scrolls fans don't want other players in their game. And he's probably right to this point. He knows his game better than I do. The people that are attracted to this game, the new players, might be just interested in the story and exploration. And maybe that's what the game has morphed into. Less and less MMO, more and more Skyrim with people just kind of hanging around. Next year will be the number nine for ESO. Most people ask me what I want to see and what do I expect in the game. I expect more of the same. Four dungeons, one trial, and a new system to grind that's non-combat driven. PCU is supposed to get the hardware refresh treatment in March, and that would be great for the community with consoles shortly thereafter. But will that be enough to keep players around? I don't think so, because it wasn't for the PCNA server in their crowd. Yes, we got a huge massive influx with April, May, and June, the chapter, along with the Harbor Refresh, but if the game isn't adding anything new and interesting, there's a lot to choose from in today's marketplace. It may not retain those old school or hardcore players that enjoy the combat and build customization like myself. It'll always have a population for exploration and questing as this is what the game is morphed into. Look, I'm not quitting Elder Scrolls Online. I'm still going to make build videos. I'm still going to make videos for the game, a lot of beginner content. And I've also moved on to different games as well, specifically Destiny 2. Been having a great time putting some builds on my website, deltiasgaming.com, along with streaming it live, doing some sweaty spaghetti PvP, and also a lot of PvE, raiding, master dungeons, and grandmasters. I've been a lot of fun. And also, I plan on dipping my toes into New World, Starfield, and Hogwarts Legacy when it comes out. Like I said when I first started, I don't know if anyone likes ESO as much as I do. And I, in fact, love the game, probably more than I should. I have great attachments, great memories, and great connections with the game. But I want to see it do well. I want to see clear lines 
lines of communication. I want to see where the game is going and why is it so important. And I want some content that's relevant to me and the people that play the game with me. So I have people to play with and I can feel more like an MMO than a single player Skyrim. But what do you think? Leave me a comment below. Is this game headed to obscurity? Is it done? Is it going to make a massive comeback or is it fine where it's at? Thanks for watching.